Hello. This week's Torah portion, Kitavo, lists the dreaded curses that will befall those who don't follow the commandments. For example, it says, quote, You shall be told a wife, and another man will rape her. The Lord will strike you with hemorrhoids. Unquote. This is very harsh language. Because of that, we are not supposed to read it aloud as stated. Politeness is valued so highly in the Jewish tradition that it even extends to changing the language of the Torah itself. Indeed, the Talmud instructs us to read the above two lines differently. Quote, Our rabbi is taught in Ibaraita, All biblical verses written in an indelicate manner must be read by substituting refined phrasing. Examples. Instead of reading, You shall be told a wife and another man will rape her, we read, You shall be told a wife and another man will lie with her. Instead of reading, The Lord will strike you with hemorrhoids, we read, The Lord will strike you with abscesses. Unquote. Indeed, abscesses can occur anywhere in the body, but hemorrhoids only in the anus, so the first is more polite. Earlier in Deuteronomy, there is a hint of how much God values politeness. But before we study that, we need some background. In Genesis, we learn that Lot's two daughters thought they and their father were the only survivors in the world after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, to perpetuate the species, they get their father drunk and then sleep with him and give birth to one son each, Moab and Ben-Ami. Quote, now God tells Moses, do not be at enmity with Moab and do not contend with them in battle. This means don't go to war with Moab. But God also says, do not harass the Ammonites, nor contend with them. This means don't even harass Ammon. Why the difference? The Talmud answers. Rabbi Hiya Bar Abba, citing Rabbi Yohanan, said, How do we know that the Holy One, blessed be He, rewards even polite speech? The elder daughter of Lot called her son Moab, meaning, of my father. And so the All-Merciful One said to Moses, Do not be at enmity with Moab, and do not contend with them in battle. Only war was forbidden, but they might be harassed. The younger daughter, on the other hand, called her son Ben-Ami, meaning son of my people, a more polite expression. And so the Torah says, Do not harass the Ammonites, nor contend with them. The Ammonites were not to be harassed at all. Unquote. So, God rewarded ben Ami's mother for giving her son a more polite name than Moab's mother. The Talmud teaches, quote, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Levi said, One should not utter a gross expression with his mouth. The school of Rabbi Ishmael taught one should always express oneself in decent language. The Torah says, Vaikra el Moshe vaidaber Hashem elav. And the Lord, the Lord, called Moses and spoke to him. Why does the Torah mention the call before the speaking? To teach us good manners. A man should not address his neighbor without first calling his name. Unquote. The Talmud in Megillah continues with examples from the Book of Kings. Quote, Instead of reading, And there was a great famine in Samaria, and a quarter cup of dove's excrements sold for five pieces of silver, we read, and there was a great famine in Samaria, and a quarter calf of what comes out of doves sold for five pieces of silver. When the Assyrian commander threatens Israel during the siege of Jerusalem, instead of reading, they will soon be eating their own feces and drinking their own urine, we read, they will soon be eating their own droppings and drinking the water of their feet. Feet is a euphemism for penises. Instead of reading, and they broke down the house of Baal and made it a feces hole, we read, and they broke down the house of Baal and made it a latrine. However, Rabbi Yehoshua ben Korha said that the actual word feces hole must be read because it is a term of opprobrium for idolatry and must not be modified. Indeed, when speaking of idolatry, the Talmud in Megillah suspends all the rules of politeness. For example, quote, Rabbi Nachman said, All foul and obscene language is forbidden, except when directed at idolatry, in which case it is permitted, because even the Bible uses such language as it is written in Isaiah, quote, The idol bell squats without even using a toilet, the idol nibbles, platters, and soils himself, unquote. 
In other words, the idols relieve themselves disgustingly and without restraints. The Talmud continues, Rav Ashi said, It is permissible to abuse someone with the reputation of being an adulterer with the term son of a harlot. The Talmud even goes so far as to say, Rabbi Huna ben Manoah said in the name of Rabbi Ahad, the son of Rabbi Ika, A Jew is permitted to tell an idolater, Take your idol and stick it up your... Here the Talmud is very specific. But since there are ladies watching this, I can't complete the quotes. But ask me later privately. So, you can leave politeness aside if you see someone doing something beyond the pale. Euphemisms abound in the Bible. Instead of to have sex with, it says to lie with, to uncover the nakedness of, or to take. The Bible avo avoids all sex-related expressions. Instead of saying, the woman with whom he has sexual relations, it says, the bread he eats. Instead of saying, this is the way of an adulterous woman, she has sex and cleans herself and says, I've done nothing wrong, it says, this is the way of an adulterous woman, she eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done nothing wrong. Instead of penis, it says private parts, mevoshim in Hebrew, or uses feet as a euphemism, as in the book of Ruth, Ruth, quote, and when Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain, and Ruth came softly and uncovered his feet and laid herself down, unquote. Instead of to defecate, it says to cover one's legs. Instead of to urinate, it says to cover one's feet. Instead of to menstruate, it says to be after the way of women. Many euphemisms are used to avoid saying to die. For example, quote, Enoch walked with God, then he was no more, for God took him. I will go down to Sheol. I will lie with my fathers. I am about to go the way of all the earth. They shall sleep an everlasting sleep and not wake. I shall go the way from where I shall not return. Unquote. Instead of cemetery, it says house of his world, meaning the world to come. Instead of cursing God, it says blessing God. The Talmud also uses many euphemisms. Sexual intercourse is usage of the bed. Impotence is not conversant with the way of the world. Anal intercourse is turning the table. Oral intercourse is kissing that place. Toilet is house of water or house of the chair. Defecation is having need of his apertures. He died instead of he departed, his soul rested, he left the life for the living, or he was uprooted from the world. Placed under, under a ban or excommunicated is blessed. The phrase dever aher, meaning something else, is for many things not mentioned openly, such as leprosy, pig, sex, immorality, idolatry. Tracted semachot, meaning happy occasions, discusses the laws of funerals and mourning. Now, all agree that politeness is good, but is it always good? First is the ambiguity in the very word politeness. What is polite is not universal. What is polite in one culture can be rude or eccentric in another. For example, the British tend to ignore the people around them unless they have been properly introduced. They interpret politeness as giving their neighbor privacy. The Americans, on the other hand, tend to acknowledge the people around them by smiling to them, saying hi, or making a neutral comment. They interpret politeness as being friendly and engaging. Second, there are drawbacks to politeness. Politeness is inappropriate in situations eliciting your strong disapproval. As we saw before, this is the teaching of the Talmud. Politeness can create ambiguity and uncertainty and lead to misunderstandings. Did he mean exactly what he said, or is he just being polite? Politeness can falsely reassure people when your intentions are malevolent. Politeness may deter people from questioning or disagreeing. Finally, it is important to keep in mind that polite does not necessarily mean good. Culture and civility do not prove goodness. For example, the Nazis had a reputation for being very polite and well-behaved in the countries they conquered, 
as long as there was no resistance to them. Yet they committed the worst atrocities in history. Some Jewish sayings make the same point. For example, politeness is the art of saying nice doggy until you find a rock. Politeness is the art of telling someone to go to hell and make him feel happy to be on his way. So, one must ask, when politeness is just a deceptive cover, is honesty better? Politeness definitely has limits. Shabbat Shalom.